in my videos, I always try to share advice that I wish I would have learned sooner um, in hopes that it will save you months, maybe even years of unnecessary struggle. Uh, struggle may be necessary in the case of growing uh, in the in the ways that are purposeful, but there are certain uh, myths and um, I guess you, you might say limiting beliefs that keep a lot of people struggling unnecessarily. And this one I want to talk about today is around creating. Uh, I know a lot of you watching this would love to become professional creators uh, or to create in a way that brings the right clients to you, the right uh, you know, connections to you that give you the professional opportunities and the personal fulfillment. And in now that I've created over, a th actually, I've created uh, almost 2,000, I've created well, well over 2,000 videos. Almost 2,000 of them are currently uploaded on my YouTube. And I have uh, made more than, uh, I've made about more than 30 online courses, um, you know, that were launched each of them were launched by themselves i know i create a lot and written hundreds of blog posts i was really stuck in the beginning and throughout the first couple of years i was i was kind of stuck with um needing to get the right order of topics of subtopics the right order of ideas before i started putting myself out there publicly this is why it took me Okay, I started my business in 2009, okay, just to give you a bit of a timeline understanding here. 2009, I started my business, and I didn't start creating content consistently until 2015. That's six years later. And like I said, those years were stuck in my mind. Um, one of the big blocks was, well, I don't have the right sequence of ideas yet i don't i'm still figuring things out so i'm not going to put myself out there publicly with my content right i'm still working on my website i'm still um getting my framework clarified i'm still um needing to understand okay this must be step one before step two before step three before step um four or whatever <laughs> whatever the sequence should be and i wonder do you ever feel stuck in that way do you know anyone who is stuck in that way? Well, I hope that this video really helps to unblock you. So when I uh, finally got tired of saying, I'm, I'm, I'm done delaying creating content, it's been six years of trying to figure out the right ideas and I was still figuring it out. I don't know about you. Okay, maybe some of you watching this have been trained in a particular method that's supposed to give you the this is step one. This must be step one before step two to, you know, complete transformation. And well, okay. If you have a particular method that you're going with, then you already have your sequence of ideas. Why don't you just start creating now? And yet, even if you've been trained in your, in a particular method, I believe that you're going to start, you're going to keep learning, right? And probably some of you may have been trained in multiple methods that you're trying to integrate into, into a whole. That's true for a lot of us who are multi-talented, multi-passionate, um, and just curious learners, right? So how do you pos how can you possibly know the absolute truth of what is step one, step two, step three? On the, on the journey of transformation, even in your niche, have you found all the knowledge that you'll ever find in your niche? It's ridiculous to, to consider that because if you've, if you've discovered all the knowledge that can possibly be discovered in your niche, you're, you're, you're done growing. Sorry, you're done learning. And years ago, a professor uh, changed my life when he helped me to understand this. He says, George, I can see that you are passionate to discover the truth, but you keep coming to me trying to convert me to this particular way of thinking. And the way that you're passionately trying to convert me suggests that you already know all the truth. That, that's why you're, you're, you're trying to say this is, the, this is the one right way of doing things. 
well, George, I've lived a few years longer than you. He's, he was way older than me, obviously. He says, you know, I, I've discovered that in our pursuit of truth, if we are not willing to be open to additional ideas, then we will miss some of the most important truths that are necessary for a more holistic picture of reality. In other words, George, he said, I can see that you are very uncomfortable with uncertainty. And your discomfort with uncertainty and your unwillingness, therefore, to allow yourself to experience some uncertainty is keeping you from more of the truth. It's keeping you from finding even greater understanding of yourself and of reality. So, in order to truly discover the biggest truth, the deepest truth, the, more comp the most comprehensive truth that we can, we must be willing to experience that feeling of uncertainty of, you know, this is what I understand right now, but I know that there's probably more to, and what I'm going to learn maybe a year from now, maybe 10 years from now, maybe 10 days from now, maybe 10 minutes from now, I'm going to learn something that might call my sequence of understanding into question, meaning, oh, People, my ideal clients should do this before they do this, before they do this, before they do this. That sequence of the transformational journey that you lead your clients on or that you understand for what, how someone should solve a problem or achieve a particular goal, that sequence could be quite destroyed as you learn greater understanding of how people change, number one. But also, as society changes, how the transformation journey, journey is, is different now. So, and as people, you know, as you discover more about human beings and about yourself and about reality, that sequence of ideas is probably going to have to be revised again and again and again and again. So, when I began creating again, when I began creating really content in 2015 consistently, I re was reminded of that lesson from my professor of, of years ago. And I said, ah, I've been stuck for six years believing that I had to get to the right sequence of ideas. I have so many ideas. I have so many ideas. And I, I feel like, oh, maybe my ideas aren't that great. I have to wait until I have better ideas. And I have to wait until the... Um, formation of my worldview is complete <laughs> before I can create content consistently. Because what if I, what if I teach something and then it, I learned a month later, oh, maybe that, that wasn't the best teaching that, uh, that maybe that, that's, that was wrong. So I, I have to wait. I have to keep learning until I'm ready to create. I'm so glad that it only took me six years to get tired of waiting. I don't know how long it's taken you hopefully less than six years for some of you it may have been 60 years i don't know but um <laughs> i learned this important lesson i remember it was reminded of uncertainty and then i learned this lesson to just begin creating therefore because in the creation in the speaking of our ideas the writing of our ideas the creating diagrams about our ideas it could even be comes the clarity and comes the questions also to say, okay, I, I just said that, but I realized what about this then? Or what about that situation? Or what about that idea? And then, like I said, you're going to come across additional brilliance uh, from other people and from yourself, right? In the coming days and weeks and months, which will then call into question your, your whole framework again. Um, now, of course, over, over the years, as you learn more and more, and as you, teach or create more and more and as you get feedback from 
your audience and from the market about your ideas, you're going to see what what resonates the most with people, right? It, what actually helps people the most. And then you'll be able to confirm, oh, that's right. This idea was really good. This sequence here in, in, in the later sequence is actually good. The beginning, I'm not getting much good feedback about that beginning sequence yet, but the later one, this, this part of it, was, you're going to get feedback that helps you to confirm your ideas. Now, even that's dangerous because you can get ossified with your philosophy uh, and become too certain about your ideas and then kind of stop learning as much as you, you, you could. So again, the lesson I learned is to just create what feels true, what I believe to be right today, to just put it out there. Okay. Knowing very well that I could change my mind in a year. I could change my mind in three days or even a day. So it doesn't matter because if I don't change my mind, I'm not really growing and learning. I don't understand those people who go, well, I, I you know, I never changed my mind about this. And look, I I've been right all along. Now that I, I understand that might say something about oh, how, how good of a judgment you've had all along, but uh, I don't know. I think most of the time, I think it's wiser to say, yeah, I've changed my mind about so many things because I've learned so many things. But I've always shared what I believed along the way. I've always shared, this is what I currently see because what I currently see and sharing with everybody could really uh, cre uh, give a very important hint to somebody else who is on the journey as well. And sometimes we need to believe certain things and try to live certain things before we're ready to understand something greater that called the previous philosophy into question. You see what I mean? It, sometimes someone needs to, to, under, to understand or believe that first before they can understand and believe the thing that you are now more advanced and wanting that, them to, to jump to right away. Right, because they need to experience that earlier stage, or you might call earlier stage, or just a different stage of development, so that they can really know, okay, what that's like before they're ready for another stage, perhaps where you are at, and things like that. So this is why, where, whenever, wherever you are at in your growth, please know there's much, much more uh, ahead of you in knowledge, wisdom, uh, clarity. Okay, and. If you don't share what you currently know, you are um, you're not giving the the benefit to so many others who need that right now. Number one and number two, the act of creating creates clarity, more clarity, not the other way around. It's not we get clear and then we create. Yes, yeah, sometimes obviously that happens, but if you wait until clarity to create. You, you grow this bad habit of waiting. And I instead hope for you to create a habit and an instinct to say, okay, this today, did I share something? Now, I deal, I mean, when I was starting to create consistently in 2015, I made a commitment to create every single day. I took the weekend off every week but I created five days a week. I created and shared and posted five days a week for a year with very little people liking it. It was just, I knew because I knew that, okay, my first year of creating as often as I could, it's me working out my ideas. It's me learning how to be on camera. It's me learning how to write again because I had writer's block really for all my life. I felt like up, uh, up to that point, I, I, I was always very um, insecure about my writing. And I was in insecure about how I looked on camera also, by the way. So I knew that the first year of creating was working out those muscles, working out um, those insecurities. And I, it's, it's a good thing that very few people liked it back then, by the way, right? Because now that I look back and go, oh my gosh, my ideas have definitely changed. I'm, I, 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 I thought that was the truth back then. And now, gosh, I now, I now I, um, I've learned more. I've I've lived more uh, of life. I've I've experienced more human hum, of humanity, and I now what I'm saying, obviously, I believe is more of the truth 
than than what I did. And also, I hope that 10 years from now, when I watch this video and other videos of, of, of this era, I'll say, oh, gosh, wow. Um, that was what I believed back then. And, and that was what I was was authentic about back then. And now I've learned even more and uh, I've changed my mind about certain things, right? So please, please don't delay. You have to, this moment will not be this moment. Today is unique. What you believe and understand about reality and about life and about transformation and about your, your work is unique today. So in other words, I have, I have this kind of time capsule mindset. Like I got to get this time capsule out there. Time capsules are like you, you, you write a letter to your future self, you bury it, you know, maybe with some items and then you find it later. Well, every day is a time capsule opportunity. So create first, create now, create today, and then worry about the sequence later. I, that was actually the main message of this video, and I barely even talked about it. But but let me just talk about that as we as we end this video here. I have written uh, four business books, and you know what? <laughs> uh, I you know, wrote authentic content marketing. I wrote joyful productivity, authentic selling, and then principles of authentic business. Well, when I wrote my fourth book, number four. As I wrote it, I'm like, oh my God, I should have I should have published this book first. Principles of Authentic Business should have come first, not fourth. <laughs> right? I, I should have done Principles of Authentic Business first and probably Joyful Productivity second and probably Authentic Content Market third. And anyway, I was like, the order is wrong of, of how I publish my books. Is that the end of my, is that the end of the world? Is that, no. Is that the end of my career? No. Is that is that embarrassing for my writing career? No. I don't think so. I mean, maybe, maybe you think that's embarrassing and that's fine. But I realized I wouldn't have known that this would have, I, I probably wouldn't have even created uh, Principles of Authentic Business ha had I not created so much content along the way to realize, oh yeah, these are more principle-based types of content that I should put into that book. You see, I, I, I couldn't have known. So it's okay. So what did I do? I simply started creating second editions of each of my books. And then I actually created the second editions in the original order, which is not the ideal order, but whatever. I just, I, you know, it's like, okay, it's been a couple of years since I've published second edition. So here it is. This more of the story is, and the same thing with online courses. I taught this course and then that course and then that course. I'm like, oh my gosh, this, this seventh course should have been the first one. That's okay. Maybe after the next cycle, I'll teach the seventh course first. This is true with blog posts. This is true with videos I make. This is true with, um, yeah, all, all the ideas that I share. I'm like, okay, I, I don't know if this is going to be, this should have been first or, or you know, 85th idea, but I'm going to share it now. And I've also learned that every piece of content, every course, every book I write, ideally should stand on its own and not have to go, well, reader, you should read this other one first before that one. I mean, I understand some of you might be reading, right, writing fiction and there's a story arc, but even fiction, right? I, I mean, you, you, you've seen certain movies that there was a prequel and you're like, oh, I didn't see the prequel yet, but I was still very much enjoyed this movie. And now I'm interested in the prequel, right? The one that came supposedly a story arc came before. Every piece of content I recommend to you should stand on its own without saying, Please read part one before you read the following, because guess what? People are, especially people who are checking you out and even people who are dedicated, loyal fans, they, they might go, well, gosh, I, I don't know if I have time to read, go, go and look for part. Maybe you linked part one. That's fine. But I still, in my experience, like I said, of creating thousands of pieces of content by now, every piece of content ideally should stand on its own. If you can do that, just, just assume, you got to assume that the reader has some background knowledge, enough background knowledge, and they don't, they can still enjoy what they're seeing. They don't have to understand 100%. They can enjoy what they understand and then let them go and explore other things later. All right? Because people will come to your blog, they'll come to your video channel, they'll come to your web, uh, social media page, and they'll just consume whatever is at the top. Maybe you pin certain things at the top, that's fine. But if you pin some, something at the top and it's really old, it kind of looks awkward too. So just... Let each piece stand on its own and just create what is 
your understanding of truth now, today, and then you can sequence later. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching.